understanding inductive and mesomeric effects in reaction mechanisms. This very rarely comes up in A-level textbooks and it's never on the syllabus and yet it pops up everywhere. It's just kind of one of those things that appears and you're expected to go, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense without anyone really explaining it. And as you will probably know by now, I am huge about explaining everything from first principles because it makes chemistry so much more simple. So inductive and mesomeric effects. This is all about what happens when electrons in bonds are polarized. If we polarize the electrons in a sigma bond between atoms, then that is an inductive effect. And if we polarize the electrons in a pi bond, then that is known as a mesomeric effect. And they both have a really important part to play in determining how reactions happen. And they're not that complicated. In fact, we've met inductive effects before. So let's take a look. The inductive effect that you will be familiar with is a negative inductive effect. And that is where we have carbon bonded to an electronegative element as a result, the electronegative element, in this case chlorine, is pulling the electrons in the carbon-chlorine bond towards itself. As a result, this carbon here becomes electron deficient. It's now delta positive, which means it's open to attack from a nucleophile, a hydroxide ion, for example. If that means nothing to you, then please go back and check the previous video in this series on the overview of reaction mechanisms. Another example of a negative inductive effect we see in a carboxylic acid, for example. So let's take ethanoic acid. So carboxylic acid group, we have got two electronegative oxygens, both of whom are pulling the electrons in the carbon-oxygen bond away from the carbon and towards themselves. So it's a negative effect as far as the carbon atom is concerned. And we end up here with a very electron-deficient carbon atom. This is going to play a big role in the way that carboxylic acids react. Now, I think we can safely say that if we've got a negative inductive effect, we can also have positive inductive effects. And this is what happens when we have electron density donated towards a carbon atom. So when might that happen? Well, let's have a look at a number of carbocations. We could have a carbocation that's got three methyl groups bonded to it and it's positively charged because it had a leaving group left. This is a tertiary number of ways shorthands for tertiary three with a y or sometimes three with a naught. So this is a tertiary carbocation because our carbon has got three alkyl groups bonded towards it or to it. If we've got a tertiary carbocation, we could have a secondary carbocation. That's where we have got two alkyl groups. Now, in my example, these alkyl groups are methyl groups, but they don't need to be methyl. They could be any alkyl group, propyl, butyl, whatever takes your fancy. So that is a secondary carbocation. And then a primary carbocation where we have got just one alkyl group bonded to the central carbon. Now, alkyl groups inflict, is that a good word? Yeah, they inflict a positive inductive effect. That means that electron density is drawn or pushed, you could look at it two ways, from the alkyl groups towards this central carbon atom, this positively charged carbon atom, and by doing so, it stabilizes the carbocation. So as you can probably predict at this point, a tertiary carbocation 
is going to be more stable, or well, the most stable of the three, more stable than the secondary carbocation, which is going to be more stable than the primary carbocation because of the number of alkyl groups directly bonded to the positively charged carbon atom. In this case, it's in the center of my molecule. And by pushing electron density towards that carbon atom, they help stabilize. The intermediate becomes more stable. And this is going to have an effect on the way that molecules react. Mesomeric effects are all about the delocalization of electrons through pi bonds or from lone pairs of electrons. In either case, if we're talking about a positive mesomeric effect, then we are using these pi bond electrons to help stabilize the positive charge on an ion. So I'm going to start by looking at this ion here. It's another carbocation, but it's also got an alkene functional group. And we know that alkenes, the double bond, exists for sigma bond and a pi bond. So we have the ability, or the ion has the ability, for these pi electrons to move towards the positively charged carbon atom. As a result, we are going to end up with resonance forms of this ion. So two different forms of this ion. So the hydrogens all stay as they were. The electrons have moved and the positive charge now sits on the left-hand carbon atom. And the pi electrons could quite easily move backwards and forwards. Now, as I said, these are known as resonance forms of our carbocation. We need to be really clear here. This double-headed arrow is just showing us the possible resonance forms. We are not saying that the pi electrons are shuttling backwards and forwards so that we have one ion switching into the other backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. In reality, the actual structure of our carbocation is somewhere between the two, and that somewhere between the two is known as a resonance hybrid. So in this case, we would draw it like such. Hydrogen, hydrogen, as I said, the hydrogens are not moving around, it's the pi electrons that are being used to help stabilize the charge. The two end carbons are delta positive, and the pi electrons are kind of spread out over the whole ion. So we can say that the positive charge is stabilized because it's kind of spread out over the whole ion. So let's have a look at a negative mesomeric effect. So this is where we are stabilizing an ion by moving charge away. Bear that in mind. I'm going to go back to our carboxylic acid. This is something we should be familiar with. Now, carboxylic acids are acidic because they have the ability to donate a proton. That is our basic definition of an acid. And when that happens, we end up with our carboxylate ion and obviously our proton. Now, this carboxylate ion is able to stabilize itself through a negative mesomeric effect. Because what happens is that the electrons, the lone pair of electrons that indicate this negative charge are able to move and the pi electrons in this double bond move onto the oxygen. So I'm being very clear about my double-headed arrow here. And the second resonance form of this ion would look like so. So O minus and the double bond O down there. So this is a negative mesomeric effect. 
and this oxygen here, I'll get my arrow in the right place, is accepting electrons from the pi bond. Once again, we're not saying that our two ions are interchanging, but we can draw a resonance hybrid form again to show the kind of electron structure of this stabilized ion. And our resonance hybrid, uh, let's call him our resonance hybrid, would be drawn like so. So it would be CH3, C, O, O. We've got our pi electrons and our lone pair that was the negative charge kind of spread out over the COO group at the end here. And there is our negative charge. So it's been stabilized across a carboxylate ion. So one of the reasons is that carboxylic acids are acidic and say um, alcohols are not is because alcohols don't have the ability to stabilize the negative charge on the ion through a mesomeric effect. So inductive and mesomeric effects, it's important that you understand that they exist. Um, you may wish to make a few notes on it because it just sort of pops up all over the place, even though it's not technically a syllabus statement. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the blurb below, it will take you straight to the Crunch Chemistry School, where you'll find all the resources you need to get that A-star grade at A-level. Together we can do this.